Hey guys, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. In a previous video, and I put the link down below in the description, we had a look at two 7800 GTX GeForce cards in SLI. Now the only working SLI motherboard I had available was for Intel, and even a 3.8 GHz Pentium 4 was holding back the cards. However, I do have a much more modern AM3 Plus motherboard with the 990FX chipset that is fully SLI certified. So why not use that and see what the 7800GTX cards can do when you match them up with a decent processor. We are using a Phenom 2X2 running at 3.5GHz, 4GB of DDR3 memory and a Sound Blaster X5 Titanium PCI Express. I've also upgraded the SLI bridge for a solid one. Okay, let's have a look how the system performs with a couple of games. Firstly, I want to point out the on-screen display on the top left of the screen. You can see the system time. That's just for me to line up the videos better with the information in the spreadsheet. Next up, we have an indicator telling us if the game is OpenGL or Direct. 3D and right next to it we can see the frame counter telling us how many frames per second the game currently runs at. Underneath that we have the GPU and CPU load figures. They're all uh, in percentage, so out of 100. So if you see figures close to 100, that means uh, that the uh, graphics card or the CPU core is fully loaded. Let's have a look how the game performs over 3 minutes of gameplay. On the horizontal axis we can see the time, so this is the first minute, this is the second minute and this is the third minute, and on the vertical axis we can see the frames per second. Initially the game starts off with a cutscene and it's capped at 30 FPS, that's why we're not getting any more, but once the game actually starts we're getting some decent frames per second. The lowest point is around 90 FPS and the highest is around 260. Looking at the important markers, we can definitely see that this game will always give you 60 FPS. So if you want to play it on a 60 Hz monitor or maybe at 75 Hz with VSync locked, you'll have a really good experience. For gamers playing at 120 Hz, you will get um, some dips, but they are fairly infrequent. Still, we are aiming for uh, a perfect experience, so I'm not going to give this the tick for 120 Hz gameplay. Looking at the GPU load, the yellow graph represents the first graphics card and the green bar represents the second graphics card. We can see the load out of 100%. So the first things we can see straight away is that both GPUs are nicely loaded. So SLI is working really well. It's not one card working harder than the others. The other thing we can see that both cards are pretty close to the 100% load, so there's not much room left. Basically this is telling us that the graphics cards are holding back the system, so if you want to get some more performance out of uh, this game, you should be upgrading the graphics card. Okay. Here we've got Move the out. processor load, we'll the, the first core is the yellow graph, and the second core is the green one. We can see there's some fairly good uh, dual core usage going on, so this is a game that can take advantage of both cores. And in terms of load, it hovers around the 50-60% mark for each of the cores. So this tells us that the processor is a little bit bored, and that's because the graphics card uh, is a little bit uh, underpowered. So to balance out the system, we would ideally be upgrading the graphics card more than the processor. And here we've got the video memory usage. The 7800GTX has 256 megabyte of video memory and we're using only a fraction of, of that, maybe 60-70 megabytes. So these cards handle the game uh, Halo in terms of video memory quite comfortably. The next game we have is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now, this is the GOG version and through a community patch you can enable widescreen resolutions, even going up to 4K. All the details are maxed out, 16x AF and 4x AA forced through the NVIDIA driver. 
looking at the frames per second over three minutes of gameplay we can see that this game is no problem to run on this machine we're getting at least 240 fps at all times so it doesn't matter if you've got 120 hertz or 144 hertz monitor you will get those frame rates all the time looking at the gpu load we can see two things firstly sli is working really well both graphics cards are fully loaded this is in contrast to the last video where i used the pentium 3.8 for some reason on that machine only one gpu was working sli didn't kick in so i'm not quite sure what's going on but anyway in this system both gpus are fully loaded so this is telling us that once again we're hitting the limitations of the graphics card rather than the processor here we can see the processor load we can see that one core is doing most of the work probably utilized around 90 percent or 80 80 between 80 and 90 percent i would say whereas the other core does very minimal work in terms of video memory we can see that this game uses a fair amount of video memory and it's fairly consistent it doesn't uh, fluctuate so 256 megabyte is what the video card has available and we are approaching that limit but we still have a little bit of a buffer available the next game is fear one of my favorite games for the windows xp era running at 1920 by 1080 we have all the details maxed out also sound running in eax and environmental effects that's all enabled we have 4x aa turned on but soft shadows disabled as far as i know you can't use both at the same time looking at the performance we can see a lot of fluctuations at the lowest we have just under 30 fps and at the highest we're getting close to 180 fps with lots of um, performance variations in between in general this game doesn't really stay above the 60 fps mark it's it's really it performs like a 30 fps game to be honest so those looking to play this game at a 60 fps constant um, we have to see whether it's the gpu or the cpu that needs to be upgraded and those who want to play at 120 hertz um, this machine is not even close to running that game looking at the gpu load we can see both video cards are being used the load is very high basically 100 percent flat out so if you want to get some more performance out of this game it looks like we need a better graphics card looking at the cpu load we can see that one core seems to do most of the work almost fully loaded throughout the three minutes of gameplay the other core is almost idle just doing minimal amounts of work and very interesting that this core is fully loaded so maybe there's also some sort of a cpu limitation going on here looking at the memory load we can see what was confirmed in the previous video that this game uses more than the 256 megabytes of video memory that the graphics card can supply so ideally you're going to play this on a 512 megabyte video card but the jury is still out whether that's enough maybe it even needs maybe it needs even more memory than 512 we will find out in a future video And the last game is Far Cry. This is also the GOG version. Now this game initially with the driver I was using, I'm using the latest Nvidia driver, it has some display corruption. So I had to roll back to an older driver in order to do the benchmark. But that that is quite common with some of these older Windows XP games. Okay, looking at the performance, we can see a difference between uh, indoor settings and outdoor settings. Basically the first, um, two minutes most of the game is uh, indoor and lots of cutscenes and we can see that the game is fairly reasonably playable at 120 fps but it does have some dips even indoors and as soon as you go outside however the frames do uh, drop and performance suffers we even have dips below the 60 fps mark um, so there are scenes uh, with lots of trees and heavily heavy uh, foliage but also when you use the binoculars uh, and zooming in, then performance goes uh, really down. Looking at the GPU load, once again, SLI is working really well. 
both cards are working hard and are basically maxed out at 100% GPU load. The two cores are not fully maxed out. We can see that one of the cores works a little bit harder compared to the other one, but we can definitely see that this game can take advantage of two cores. And if you want to get some more performance out of this game, the processor is fine. We just have to upgrade the graphics card and balance out our system a little bit more. Looking at the video memory, most of the time we were fine, but we do run in a situation where the 256 megabyte on the 7800 GTX is just not cutting it anymore. So once again, this is a game where you're probably better off with a 512 megabyte graphics card, but we will look into that down the track and see if and how much memory is actually necessary to run Far Cry without any hitches. And here we have all the information summarized in a neat little table. Now in order for a game to get a green tick, for example, for 120 FPS, in order for that game to get a green tick, it has to be faster than 120 FPS at all times. Even a little drop below will earn it a red cross. So we can see Return to Castle, Castle Wolfenstein gets ticks across all the frames per second. Um, fear, however, too demanding. So here we definitely have to look for a faster machine. Far Cry is playable most of the time at 60 FPS, but there was a dip below, so it only got the 30 FPS tick. And Halo is playable at 60 FPS all the time, but it didn't quite get the tick for the 120 FPS. With these two cards, we are also getting access to a special form of AA, SLI AA. Here we have Return to Castle of Wolfenstein running at 1080p and 16x SLI AA. And that's it for this video guys, thanks for watching, share your thoughts down below in the description, I'm really eager to hear what you think of the new video format and all the benchmark graphs and I'll see you soon in another video.